it's Kelly, and I, I consider myself to be uh, privileged to be friends of two wonderful Arizona winemakers, and that would be um, Eric Glomsky and Sam Pillsbury, and they'll be joining us in a few minutes, and I'd like to introduce them. Uh, this is about our, um, our, our Arizona winemaker's sixth biannual cruise. Um, and again, I'm just the organizer and, and I, I said privileged to call them my friends. So I'd, I'd like to turn, um, I'd like to introduce each one of them, Eric and Sam. If Eric, you would like to go first and talk a little, talk a little bit about Page Spring Cellars, please. Sure. Um... So I'm, I'm actually a, a Midwestern native. I, I was born in Chicago and then I grew up in Boston, moved to Arizona to go to college and kind of fell in love with the Southwest. Um, that, that basically, uh, interestingly, my, my studies in ecology, which were all my academic pursuits, led me into winemaking and grape growing. I, I made wine in California for several years and then uh, I moved back to Arizona in 2002, uh, planted my own vineyards in 2004, and uh, we're actually just finishing up, uh, hopefully this week, our uh, 17th vintage here in Arizona. So uh, we've uh, been chipping away at, at this frontier. Um, there's not a lot of recent history in Arizona wine, and uh, myself and Sam and, and a handful of other uh, winemakers have been kind of redefining things here and trying to take uh, wine quality uh, to a new level here. So pretty straightforward. Sam, it's all you, man. Can you hear us? Hey. No, I sure can. This is great. Yeah, sorry there's no picture here, but I'm, I'm driving from uh, my home in Phoenix to my vineyard in uh, Cochise County, and I couldn't get a picture, so we're just talking. But anyway, uh, um, I can tell from my funny accent, um, I actually was I'm actually a New Zealand citizen, but I was born in, in Connecticut and grew up up and down the East Coast and in the Caribbean. And, and actually, the last place I lived in the States was not far from where Eric started, outside of Boston. Uh, emigrated to New Zealand when I was 13 and got educated there. I started making movies there. Made movies for 40 years in New Zealand and Hollywood. And uh, 20 years ago, I, I found this miraculous spot in the high elevation Cochise County, planted vines there in 2000 and um so we are a little different in how we operate um, i love the way eric operates he uses a bunch of different vineyards he always acknowledges them and he's exploring terroir my mode is that uh two things i i um I, I basically only make wine from the fruit we grow in our own vineyard which is as close to organic as you can get um and in fact the, our, the funny thing about this the only grapes that we're using and our current uh, current 2019 white releases is some some fabulous Roussan that I bought from Eric last year, and, and it's in a new blend of ours called Rhone White. But um, otherwise, we're, we're uh, we, we only we only use our own fruit. We we ferment our we hand pick everything. We harvest our fruit by hand. The vineyard and the winery is, is built right on the vineyard, and we also ferment all of our wines with the wild yeast that come in. Uh, from, from the vineyard. I'm a kind of a terroir freak and I wanted as much as possible to make wines that came from, from one place uh, at a specific time and made significantly by one person because I feel there's enough generic food and wine in the world. And it's just my own personal preference. I don't, I don't think anyone else needs to do that, but it is turning out to be um, a, an awful lot of fun. I've probably learned more from Eric Bobsky than um, anybody else on earth uh, because I came, I started, <laughs> started planting my first vine 20 years ago. I didn't know anything about making wine or growing grapes. And I was a, uh, a filmmaker who's made like 32 movies and TV series. So I've had a really steep learning curve and uh, we're doing really well. And I have to say, I've never had so much fun in my life and I'm looking forward to doing this cruise with all you guys. So now I'm just going to talk just a little bit about this itinerary because I'm going to hand this over to Maddie and Dejana because they really are the experts. Um, so the Gems of Southeast Europe, this is a very exotic kind of part of the Danube River, the lower Danube, uh, starting in Hungary, ending in Romania uh, with an optional pre and post that, you know, clients can talk to me about directly. But, um, you know, this area of the world has, you know, wines that are, 
not exported to most places in the US. You don't see many of the wines from Serbia, Croatia, Bulgaria, Hungary, and Romania here. So it'll be truly a wine discovery as well and as amazing uh, historic itinerary as well, because you know we've seen the Ro Holy Roman Empire, the Austria-Hungarian Empire, World War I, World War II, the Balkan Wars, communism here. So um, a wide range of history here, as well as some really new and interesting wines for us to discover. Looking forward to that. I hope everyone else is too. Wow, thank you so much. This is, uh, sounds like a, it's going to be an amazing experience. Uh, but uh, again, not only of course, with uh, the wonderful, uh, you know, Ama Waterways hospitality, uh, but of course, all the wonderful elements that uh, Denise, you're adding to it, uh, bringing on uh, Eric and, and Sam. It's uh, really, uh, our, our wine cruises are, are among our highest rated cruises. Uh, and I have no doubt that this one uh, is gonna be uh, very special. So I wasn't kidding earlier, save a spot for me. I might be interested in, in joining you as well. Uh, and my name is Alex Pinello. I'm the Vice President of Sales uh, for Ama Waterways. And, I, and I'd like to spend a few moments to introduce uh, our, our, our team, uh, your family. And we say family because then you'll, you'll understand exactly why I say family. Because once you take a cruise on, on Ama Waterways, from the minute you set foot on board the ship, you instantly become a member uh, of the Ama Waterways family. And, and, and our crew, and especially our cruise managers, which I'll introduce them in a second, uh, they are the true heroes. Uh, and they bend over backwards to really exceed your expectations every step of the way with surprises and delight, making you, like I said, a member of, of our family. And even if you take a pre or a post package with, uh, with us, uh, with Ama Waterways, uh, of course, the cruise manager will be with you every step of the way. Uh, and, and, and even you, before you set foot on the, on, on the ship, I must say, uh, you know, Denise, you know, you have a, a great history, a great partnership, a great friendship. I think no one knows the Alma Waterways product better than Denise. Uh, and she's going to do everything she can to really uh, just put together. And she has already put together this amazing experience for you. And she's going to take great care of you from start to finish. So thank you, Denise, for the uh, for the opportunity. So like I said, uh, I'm Alex Pinello, the Vice President of Sales. With me today, we also have Michael Weldon. Michael Weldon uh, is our Director of Sales, uh, who takes uh, care of all of our wonderful uh, salespeople, our BDM out, out in the field, working closely with uh, with Denise uh, and our valued uh, travel partners. So uh, so again, we, we, we wouldn't be here without you. We wouldn't be here without Denise. So thank you for your wonderful support. Uh, and of course, we don't have a picture of him, but Chris Mount is behind the scenes, making sure that everything's working perfectly. Uh, he's our manager of our business, uh, uh, you know, our business inside sales team, or our sales engagement team, as we call them, uh, taking care of uh, all of our needs, of course. Uh, and as I mentioned, the true stars of, of today's, you know, presentation, at least from the from the AMA side, uh, you know, our superstars, our special guests. Uh, we have usually we usually have one one cruise manager, uh, but Denise really was trying to make this super special. So she said, if we can have two, and we said anything for you, Denise. So we're giving you, <laughs> we're giving you two, two cruise managers today. Uh, and not only are we giving you two cruise managers, we're also giving you uh, Angie. Uh, and, and I'll start with that uh, with Maddie. Uh, you know, Maddie, of course, is uh, one of our wonderful cruise managers uh, from Romania. Uh, and she, you know, again, does a great job. She, you know, she's on a lot of these Lower Danube cruises, and I think no one knows the Lower Danube uh, better than Maddie. So, uh, you know, her along with uh, uh, Angie and Diana, they're going to walk us through this virtual cruise to the Lower Danube. So you're you're really in for a treat. Uh, aside from from Maddie, we also have Angie. Angie's also from Romania, uh, but Angie's not a cruise manager. Even though Angie has some experience because she worked on some of the uh, the river ships, uh, you know, river cruises uh, earlier in, in, in her career, also from Romania. And you can see both uh, Maddie and Angie wearing their beautiful uh, Ian from uh, Romania, the beautiful Romanian blouses. I'll never forget that word. Uh, and then, of course, uh, also joining us today is our, our, our second cruise manager, uh, Diana. Uh, and Diana is from Croatia. Uh, and uh, and she's also uh, you know 
not only is she a, a wonderful, uh, you know, cruise manager, of course, but she also has a very strong uh, wine background and really knows a lot about wine and truly is a wine expert. So uh, again, you're in for a treat. We're going to take you on this wonderful virtual wine cruise. But before I turn it over uh, to our host for the presentation, I once again want to say thank you. So thank you to uh, to Denise, thank you to Eric, to Sam, and thank you for all of you for spending part of your day with us today to really learn a little more about AMA Waterways uh, and our wonderful wine experiences through the Lower Danube. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angie. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, once again, from my side, thank you, Denise, for uh, bringing these wonderful wine groups on board. And uh, this year, we have a beautiful picture of the Ama Verde, the ship that you will be sailing on in July 2021. And this will be your home away from home for your seven days on the river from Budapest to Giurgiu, Romania. And um, the ship has beautiful French, French balconies as well as twin balcony staterooms. Uh, and we have here one of the accommodations so you can see how bright it is and how well appointed and um, uh, you have um, the screen where you can have internet access at any time during the cruise complimentary. Um, it is a very inclusive program. All your meals on board will be prepared by European chefs, amazing cuisine, all meals will be included as well as free flowing wine for dinner and as Denise mentioned, these wines will be the regional quality wines um, and um, you will truly uh, enjoy this at every lunch and dinner on board. And besides that, on a wine theme cruise, we will have some special wine events that Diana will mention. Um, we also have a very special program on board. It's our wellness program. So we have a wellness host and you will have five, six classes every day that you can join from gentle yoga stretching in the morning to more active co core intense classes in the afternoon. Um, you, you will have all the excursions included and they are uh, hosted by amazing local guides. You will uh, find your own pace on the cruise. You can join gentle walking groups as well as more active ones including hiking tours and guided bike tours, which are very special and uh, our guests truly enjoy sometimes riding the bike from one small town to the next one along with the ship. So these are wonderful things ahead of us and um, we can't wait to, to welcome you to the city of Budapest and on this amazing itinerary and Maddie will tell us a few highlights here. Thank you very much, Angie, and uh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> good to meet all of you and uh, your guests. And I'm uh, very happy to talk about uh, the very special cruise that is the closest to my heart. I do all the European rivers. Uh, I've been on the rivers for 20 years and for 14 with AMA Waterways. And this one is definitely the closest to my heart because I was born on the banks of the Danube in a small town in Romania called Corabia, which means the sailing ship. So I've been swimming in the lower Danube all my life. And uh, there are so many reasons why you and your guests would like to join us here. For example, if you will book, and I truly recommend all of you to book the pre in Vienna and the post tour in uh, Transylvania or in Istanbul. So if you book the entire, if you take the entire package, in two weeks you will go through seven countries. Austria, Hungary, Croatia, Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia and Turkey if you go to Istanbul. And this is one of the few cruises uh, that we have uh, which takes you uh, through so many countries. So the variety of culture is impressive here. And as Denise said uh, at the beginning, you go from the Austro-Hungarian Empire cuisine, history, habits uh, and architecture 
to the Slavic countries and then to the Ottoman countries. So they are all so different. Another reason is that we cruise for very long. Maybe this is the longest cruise that we have in one week. We cover 800 miles or 1200 kilometers. Another reason is that during this cruise, we take you to through the deepest lock we have in Europe, which is 100 feet in two steps. Then another reason is the beautiful wild nature that you will see along the river with unique plants and birds and national parks. Another reason is the long uh, history, starting with the Romans, and we mentioned already the uh, Austro-Hungarians, the Ottomans, the First and the Second World War, uh, uh, Yugoslavia, uh, then the communism, the fall of the communism, and the independence war of 1990s. Uh, when uh, six countries wanted to be independent from uh, Yugoslavia. We have lots of myths and legends uh, here and the local guides and your cruise manager will tell you more about the vampires, but not only. And uh, maybe for you, one of the uh, main reason to come here is um, not only because uh, these countries are less uh, discovered, so they are less touristy, you are not going to find hundreds of buses or tourists to wander around, and that is uh, only due to the recent uh, history, but also because we have delicious food here, homemade food, and as Angie mentioned already, our um, uh, chefs, executive chefs on board, they are from Eastern Europe, either from uh, Bulgaria or from uh, uh, Hungary or from Romania. So they will cook local specialities. You don't have to find a local uh, restaurant to have something uh, Bulgarian, for example. You will find it uh, on board for lunch. And the um, unique and uh, modern wines that we have in this part of the world. And if you follow the contest, the wine contest that we have in Europe uh, every year in, Brux in Bruxelles, Belgium, then you will realize that the Eastern European wines got the highest uh, number of golden medals. So you can check that online at any time. So we have less known wines here. They are uh, modern or they are small and um, young uh, wineries, but they have delicious wines. So you are in a good, in a uh, big treat here on the lower Danube. And you embark the ship in uh, Budapest, which is the queen of the Danube, the pearl of the Danube. You have to have a walk in the, the evening uh, along the banks of the river to see the main uh, buildings illuminated, like the um, uh, majestic one that you have in front of you, and that is the Hungarian parliament. Uh, next day, we start cruising early in the morning and we cruise the entire morning through the countries, the, the Hungarian countryside. And that will be the first opportunity for our wine hosts to have a wine presentation on board. So Mr. Eric and Mr. Sam will uh, tell you more about uh, the wine in the new world and in the old world. And in the afternoon, we have a few tours for you. Uh, one of the choices is to take you to the colorful uh, city of Pech, a small Hungarian town, where like in all the Eastern European um, medium-sized uh, and big-sized cities, you will find a mosque, a church, either Catholic or Orthodox, and uh, synagogue, exactly that to, like you see here in the picture. Patch is a very colorful and vibrant uh, city. It has a lot of uh, culture, lots of museums and theaters and so on. If you wanna um, 
do something else that afternoon, then maybe you take uh, the other choice of tools that we have for you, and that will be the wine tasting. So you'll have the chance to taste the Hungarian wine, and uh, Diana will tell you more about uh, the Hungarian wines. Diana? Yes, uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Alex, for a very nice introduction, and thank you, Denise, for organizing this uh, uh, for us. Um, I would like to uh, actually mention something that Denise has already mentioned. Um, she made a very excellent, uh, an excellent point where she said that the wines from this region, and we actually mentioned the same, that the wines from this region are a, really a special treat because they're not um, as internationally known as maybe, uh, let's say, upper Danubian wines, such as the wines from Austria, Germany, um, France. Uh, but uh, we do, um, as Maddie said, uh, we are recognized when it comes to awards. Uh, the thing with our wines in this region is that many of the wineries are small wineries, privately owned, family owned wineries. So this is the reason why perhaps they're not producing as many uh, bottles of wine in to, to send internationally, sell internationally. Um, however, if you choose to uh, take this particular Ama Waterways cruise, um, I'm sure you will enjoy uh, the wines that we have uh, for you to taste. Uh, if you look at this picture, uh, this picture is a, a, is a one of uh, Sexar, the wine village in uh, Hungary. Uh, this is a special wine region in southern Hungary. Um, as you can tell from the picture, it, it is a beautiful, charming, uh, hilly region of the country and they produce in this region quite well structured red wines mostly. The thing with this part is that they are located in the Pannonian Plain and the interesting part about it is that the Pannonian Plain was actually a sea once, um, retracted million, year, million years ago. Um, but the soil stayed fertile and flat and um, it, it was perfect for agriculture and uh, viticulture as well. The climate uh, uh, Pannon, uh, the climate is uh, Pannonian, which means that the summers are warm, the winters are a little, a little, are a little bit colder. Um, and when we speak about the wines or the grapes that we have in this uh, region, the most popular would definitely be Frankish or Blue Frankish in English. Um, those are the grapes whose home is uh, Central in and Eastern European region, which is exactly where we're going to come to. And it's been like that since the Middle Ages. Um, mostly the wines that are produced from this kind of grape would be full-bodied red wine, um, which tastes of uh, black fruit and pepper, and it would have the oaky uh, uh, note um, as well. Um, the Blau Frankish or Kik Frankosh, as Hungarians uh, would say in this village. Um, and also one of the most popular varieties would be the same uh, grapes that are used but to produce rosé wine. Um, this one would have um, uh, fruity flavors, but it would still be made from the, from the same uh, kinds of, the, uh, of grapes. Um, definitely the most popular uh, wine that we produce in this region would be uh, or in translation to English, uh, bull's blood. Um, it does sound uh, quite, um, it does have a story behind it as well. Um, I will just say first that the, the wine is a red wine as well. It's complex. It's very easy to drink. It's quite elegant as well. Um, and uh, there is a legend connected to it as well, because as Mary mentioned, we do have a lot of legends in, in the region. So I share the legend with you so you're not surprised when you get uh, to the region. Um, legend says that uh, during the wars with the Ottomans um, in the 16th century the Hungarian soldiers drank well, well they were given uh, the wine from the general to drink just um, stronger braver so they can fight a little bit uh, better so they were given this wine to drink and the uh, and they were fearless as you can imagine. Uh, the Ottomans noticed that they had a little bit of red, uh, red on their mustache and on their clothing. So they heard that this was uh, the, the bull's blood. So they got afraid and they retracted. <laughs> so the Hungarians took the victory very easily. And local people 
like to boast a lot about uh, this as well. Uh, so this is definitely one of the most popular uh, wine, um, red wine that you can taste in this region. Uh, if we speak about the notes that you can find in the wine, those would be um, black fruit, um, dark fruit in general, and it is a blend that is important to mention. Um, Blau Frankish is the most important grape variety in it too. Thank you very much, Diana. So, uh, now we leave Hungary behind and uh, day three of our cruise will take us to Croatia, very close to Diana's home. <laughs> we will stop in the um, uh, biggest Croatian uh, port on the Danube and that's uh, the city of Vukovar. Uh, and Croatia now is one of the six countries that used to be part of Yugoslavia. Um, when we stop in Croatia and in Serbia, you will hear a lot about the recent uh, wars of independence in the Balkan countries, which happened in 1991, 92, 93, and so on. Um, if you would like to know more, as we say, preparation, preparation is everything. If you, Denise, or our wine host or your, your clients would like to know more about this region, they can uh, read the book, The Balkans by uh, uh, Misha Glenny. So we'll uh, give them a wonderful, uh, a better idea what is going on in this part of the world. So um, if your guests want to hear more about their uh, recent history, then in Vukovar, Croatia, we can take them to the Elts Castle, which used to belong to a German noble family. They donated their mansion to the local authorities and they rebuilt the um, palace uh, or the castle as you see it now. And they set up a very beautiful and interesting museum, which even it is young, it already won lots of international awards. At the ground floor, you'll see artifacts from the noble family, but on the top floor, you will hear more about the independence war from 1991. If you wanna skip this part of the history, then we have another uh, choice for you and you can take the wine tasting tour that Diana really knows everything about as it is in her area. So another choice will be a wine tasting in Croatia. Thank you, Mary. Uh, well, in fact, actually, yes, I do live uh, only, my home city is half an hour from this wonderful wine region. Um, and I did grow up, uh, well, tasting these wines ever since I could, I'd say so. Um, you know, when we speak about these wines, uh, again, Ilok is a place which is in the easternmost part of Croatia, and it is located a little bit on the hill, which is a perfect location for, uh, for wine because of the climate, because of the wind, the soil, everything just perfectly in its favor. Um, we mostly produce white wines, 80% would be white, some percent uh, go to the red, red wine. Um, the most popular uh, white wine varieties would for sure be uh, Grashevina, which is the most similar, let's say, um, to, uh, to um, uh, Riesling, German Riesling, uh, mostly. It is the most uh, sought after wine in Croatia. It is the most consumed wine in Croatia. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have some uh, bottles that I could get uh, of that winery. So I will, show you, I will show you how they look like. So this is the most, um, the most popular winery in that region, the biggest one as well, but again, perhaps not as big to, to, to sell it internationally. Um, so you will have a chance to taste this one uh, definitely. Um, it's a light wine. Um, it is a very fresh, higher in, in acidity as well. Um, so it will refresh you, especially if you, if you join us on this cruise during the summer months. Uh, the most popular white wine from this region would be Traminas, 
which is the one I have here. It is Gewurztraminer, and I wish you could smell it now. It has uh, a little bit of a, Gewurz means perfume, so it does have a little bit of a perfumey uh, smell to it, um, or, or flavor to it. Um, like got it again, aromatic, um, and it is the most popular wine, especially because it was uh, because it was served at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Then again, uh, during the wedding of Kate and Williams, and again during the wedding of uh, Meghan and Harry's. Uh, every time it was a different kind of vintage, but I'm sure you can uh, you can understand why this is such a such an excellent wine and why you should try it uh, if you come to our region. Thank you very much, Diana. Yes, they are delicious uh, wines that we taste in Ilo. And after that, we make our way to the ship. And uh, in the same day, day three of the cruise, after we visit Croatia and Bukovar and Ilo, then lunchtime we cruise. And then second stop of that day will be in another country, in Serbia. We cross the border not only between Croatia and Serbia that lunchtime, but also um, the border between the uh, Catholic countries and the Orthodox countries. Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, they are all Orthodox. So the architecture and especially architecture of churches will change. Um, then we go from the Latin alphabet to the Slavic alphabet, to the Cyrillic alphabet that they use in Serbia and in Bulgaria. Um, we cross the border between former Roman Empire and Byzantine Empire, between Habsburg, Austro-Hungarian Empire and Ottoman Empire. So that border is very important. And in the afternoon, we take you to the colorful city of Novi Sad. And you either go for a walk just out of uh, the ship, the um, colorful place is just there. And in the evening, we take you to visit the Petrovaradin fortress that you see here in the picture. It is called the Gibraltar of the Danube. It's the largest fortress we have in uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. It has lots of uh, miles of underground galleries, and this is where we take you. After dinner at the candlelight, we take you to visit the um, catacombs and the underground galleries, where Tito, the former um, uh, dictator of Yugoslavia, used to be a prisoner when he was a young communist in 1920s. We stay overnight in, uh, Nov in Novi Sad, and next morning, when you wake up, you will be in the capital of Serbia, which is Belgrade, that uh, Angie really likes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I am so excited learning about uh, the wines. I have to say I'm not really the wine connoisseur, but I'm so, uh, I love the stories of Diana, and uh, I can't wait to, to try the Croatian wine, which is one that I haven't tried before. Uh, something very special during our wine theme cruise is our dinner um, with wine pairing. So our executive chefs will choose a wonderful menu that will pair perfectly with the wines that are served that evening. And this is a special dinner that we have on a wine theme cruise. Also, you may have noticed that another um, wonderful feature of the Yama Waterways Cruise is the choice of excursions. So every day you can choose your own excursion. If you like more history, you can join us on a regular city tour. Um, if all of you love wine, so I know that the wine uh, excursions will be so popular. If you want to feel a little bit more active, you can definitely choose um, the bike tours. And I would I'm very happy to, to tell you a few of the highlights of the city of Belgrade, a city that is very close to my heart. Um, and something that I would like to touch right now is um, how friendly the Eastern European people are, right? And uh, that is something that you will notice when you, you go to Serbia, especially. Um, you will um, have the choice to, to see uh, a palace, a royal palace that belonged to the um, Karadordevich family. 
And about 85% of the time, uh, Prince Alexander is at home. So he will say hello to our group. And how many times in our lifetime do we, do we meet a real prince? So this is a very nice event. And uh, then we will visit the um, mausoleum of Tito, who was known as the nice dictator, so to speak, of the Eastern European countries. And um, the fact that he was loved is also shown in this beautiful um, mausoleum that we will visit during the city tour. My favorite part of Belgrade is the beautiful bohemian romantic street of Skadarlia. Look at it, la ladies and gentlemen, how special it is with the beautiful lights. And what is very special is that in some of the taverns and the restaurants, you have live music. You have mandolin players, guitar players, um, you, you can see girls uh, dressed in medieval outfits every now and then on the street. So it's really a beautiful um, atmosphere. And even if the cuisine on board is really wonderful and you, you very uh, rarely can miss dinner on board or lunch on board, if you would choose one evening during this, this cruise to be out and enjoy a local restaurant, this will be my choice on this particular itinerary, the, city, the street of Skadarlia. And I think that Denise may know some good places there, right, Denise? If not, we will give you some, some suggestions before you go. Suggestions. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. <laughs> so um, Serbia, um, Bulgaria, and Romania are mostly uh, Orthodox countries, and uh, this beautiful church of San Sava, San Sava Temple or San Sava Cathedral, um, has some of the largest bells inside of a European church. Um, and uh, you will hear this beautiful sound from every corner in the city around lunchtime, and you will visit this cathedral during the city tour. Something very special for the Eastern European countries is the folklore, the folklore that includes a lot of traditions, a lot of um, stories that are sent from one generation to the other without knowing who the author really was, as well as um, traditional dances and beautiful songs. And you will notice um, the um, costumes, the national costumes of each country, and all of them are pretty, pretty um, flowery design, and you can even buy this beautiful Ia in, in Bucharest or, or when you are in Transylvania. You can uh, buy the Hungarian ones that are quite similar, um, also with beautiful colorful flowers, and you can buy them in, in Hungary. So you can bring home some traditional um, tops, as well as uh, maybe some of the paprika from Hungary. You can bring home um, some of the amazing wines as well as, as some of the palinka, yes, because we are also known for our plum brandy in this region. And uh, it has different names from one country to the other. It's quite strong. And uh, you may want to, to bring one of these uh, home from the trip. Um, and we will also taste the Serbian wines here, right, Diana? Exactly, yes, thank you. Um, of course, uh, you should be uh, careful with Palinka before you try <laughs> try wines. Uh, they say that two is more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> However, when it comes to Serbian wines, um, as we mentioned previously, uh, Serbia does not lack when it comes to smaller family-owned wineries. Uh, for this reason, uh, you can taste uh, really a, a, a very big diversity of the same kinds of wines. And what we will do, we will take you to one of those family-owned wineries, um, which will give you uh, an impression of how this actually looks like. So if you look at this picture, this particular picture shows you a, a, a former Roman tunnel. So many of these win wineries uh, or uh, viticulture dates back all to the Roman times. So this particular was a Roman uh, tunnel, which was later on made into a family-owned business, and it is now uh, a place uh, where, where uh, the family invites their guests uh, to, to taste their um, homemade wines. Um, the majority of the wines in uh, uh, Serbia are made in two wine regions. One is closer to uh, Novi Sad, which we also meant, uh, visit on our um, tour. 
um, on our cruise. And the other one is around the capital of Serbia, around Belgrade. And again, those would be those family owned wineries. When we speak about the kinds of wine that you will taste with us, uh, those would uh, most uh, definitely be Traminer. Again, Gewurz Traminer. You will have a chance to compare. How did you like the one in uh, Croatia and how do you like uh, the Serbian one? Uh, because of course, even though it is also the Nubian area, um, they always have certain differences. Um, but they will be, again, very aromatic, lower in acidity, light bodied and very easy to drink offer in this uh, in this part of the region uh, Sauvignon Blancs, Merlot, uh, Cabernet Sauvignons as well and um, but the ones that I would like to mention would be dessert wines which are very popular. They also have white dessert wines called Sheherazad um, which again as, as a real Sheherazad can be tricky can be tricky as palinka as well um, because it's very high in alcohol. Uh, it's very sweet so um, definitely goes after dinner. Um, however, it can trick you if, you if you drink too much. And of course, uh, we have a red dessert wine here in this region, and you can buy this one anywhere in Serbia. It's called Bermet. Um, so if you go for a walk somewhere uh, on your own, this would definitely be my suggestion for you to try or to take home as a, as a souvenir for someone as well. This one is also higher in sugar, um, um, higher in alcohol, but extremely popular with the locals and tourists alike. Wonderful. So after we leave Belgrade, we, uh, we are going to cruise through the Iron Gates, and this is the entrance um, to Iron Gates, something very special in 2021. We will be visiting the Golubac Fortress inside. Uh, it's one of the medieval fortresses in Serbia, and uh, really, really um, amazing uh, moment because usually used, we used to just cruise the entire day. But uh, in 2021, we will stop first at the first fortress of Golubac. Um, after this, the Danube will form this narrow gorge with Serbia on one side with the Balkan mountains and Romania on the other with the Carpathians. Um, beautiful nature on both, both sides of the river. And you are passing by this um, largest carving in a rock in Europe, uh, which is uh, King Tecebalus. He was the king of Dacians when the Romans conquered Dacia and they formed Romania. Um, then we will um, also pass by a couple of beautiful, beautiful um, Orthodox churches and, um, and uh, a tabula Traiana, which is an inscription, a Roman inscription on a rock on the way to, um, to Bulgaria. We also stop um, to, to make this day very exciting, we have a wonderful Balkan barbecue on the sun deck and our Eastern European chefs will prepare all the local specialties, including the um, skinless sausages of Romania that are called michi and um, the, the eggplant spread. We really bake the eggplants first and then we chop it and mix it with garlic and special oils. And it's a wonderful spread that you will taste during the cruise. Um, and um, you will also be passing by uh, the large, the, the only double lock on this particular itinerary, the Iron Gates 1 and Iron Gates 2. Amazing engineering work and you will be, uh, the ship will be lifted in two chambers to 115 feet high. And then we will, we will arrive Bulgaria and Mehdi will share with us some of the highlights of this beautiful country known for the rose perfume, right Mehdi? Yes, Angie, thank you. Yes, the next two days of the cruise, actually day six and seven will find us in Bulgaria, which nowadays is a small country, population about seven million, but it used to be a huge empire for hundreds of years that spread uh, to, th uh, it touched, three seas long time ago. And nowadays, as you said, it is known for the rose perfume, for the lavender fields, for yogurt, and for beautiful girls and tasty wines. <laughs> 
our first stop in Bulgaria will be in the small town of uh, Vidin. And uh, here we have some uh, tours for you. Here is one of the days where you can be active and take a guided tour, of a, a bike guided tour. And you can see everything is flat here. So it's really easy to go uh, and uh, see the main sites by uh, bicycle. Or we take you to uh, on a more active tour and we bring you to the Beogradchik rock formation. Uh, it is a 30 miles long uh, um, mountain chain with uh, red uh, sandstone. And uh, the guides will show you different uh, figurines. For example, on your right hand side on top, I'm sure you can see uh, the elephant. And on the left side at the corner, you can see the Madonna with the child and so on. So the rocks have uh, different shapes and of course different uh, legends. And uh, if you feel active, you can climb the stairs that you see there on the slope of uh, the hill and you go all the way on top of uh, the rocks for a gorgeous view of the entire valley. Uh, after Beogradchik, we bring you back to Vidin and then you can visit Baba Vida Fortress, which is one of the oldest, more than 2000 years old fortress and is one of the best Bulgarian preserved fortresses. Uh, here in Vidin, we also have something unique for Ama waterways. It's the only place in Europe but probably all over the world, right, Angie? Where we take you to a, a local a family to uh, show you how to cook, and you will actually try to uh, cook um, a banita, which is a typical Hungarian um, a pastry filled with cheese and they serve it mainly for breakfast uh, uh, with yogurt because as i mentioned bulgaria is the country of uh, yogurt so this is something unique we we do not offer this tour anywhere else but here to take you to a local house and the lady of the house will teach you how to do it and you can bring on the ship what you cooked uh, another tour uh, from uh, Vidin will be a wine uh, tasting. Uh, even the ship will be on the Bulgarian side of the river because the Danube here is the border between Bulgaria and uh, Romania. So the ship will be in Bulgaria. We have some tours in Vidin and the wine tasting this time takes you across the river to the left bank of the river to the small uh, town of Calafat, which is in Romania. We take you to a very special place. It's called Port Cetate or Harbor. Um, Cetate is uh, like fortress. Uh, it used to be an old agricultural harbor uh, from where Romanians exported uh, cereals uh, to Hungary and uh, to the Austro-Hungarian Empire because it was founded in 1800s. Of course, it was in ruins uh, during the communism. And in the uh, 1990s, a very famous Romanian poet, Dinescu, uh, and most of the time when you go there, he will be the presenter and he really is a character. So you have to meet Mr. Dinescu and he will tell you more about the revolution when, where he took part in 1990s and he, we got rid of Ceausescu, but he, this um, uh, writer, he played an important role during that time. Anyway, he set up a very unique place. He restored the entire uh, harbor and he created a cultural harbor, as uh, he calls it. So in summer, he organizes camps for artists, for writers, for sculptures. He has um, 
film and wine and cooking festival right there. So that's the place where we take you to taste some of his unique uh, wines. He brought some international uh, 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 vines as well in his own, because he has his own uh, um, uh, vines, right? Uh, he owns about 100 hectares, which that in acres means about 250, I think. So it's not so uh, big, but um, his wines are delicious. So you will taste uh, Chardonnay, like the one I found in my kitchen. <laughs> it is from him, Cetate. Uh, some Merlot, but also some rum uh, typical Romanian wines, like Tămâioasă Românească or Fetească Alba. So it's a very special place, very unique, um, famous all over Romania, definitely, and the Balkans. I'm not sure if you uh, will uh, get to the wine in the States because we drink it all here in the Balkans. So that's the wine tasting from Vidin, which takes place in Romania. Next and day, and if I may just add uh, to Maris, um, Romania is actually a country which is uh, definitely not as recognized internationally, again, as many others. But I would like to mention that if we speak about the wine production, um, it is 13th in the world when it comes to pr wine production and 5th in Europe, which, which does uh, say a lot. And many people ask, um, how, how come Romania is not as popular or how, how come we never tried Romanian wines? Um, when again, the, the, the situation is such that it's not, it is not as popular, um, but there is a big difference uh, compared to quality and afford affordability. Um, I'm sure you will be very happy when you, when you go to that region and when you have a chance to buy some very quality wine for very affordable, affordable prices. And Romania is one of those, one of those places. Thank you, Diana. So the last day of the cruise finds us in another place in Bulgaria, the city of Ruse. And from Ruse, we take you for a full day tour to Veliko Trnovo, which used to be the capital of the huge Bulgarian kingdom that I, used, I mentioned earlier. It's a beautiful place with unique architecture, uh, a long uh, uh, gorge of a small river, River Yantra. Or from there, from Ruse, you go to visit some unique churches that are carved in the mountains, um, hundreds years old. Or you go for a, a wine tasting in uh, Bulgaria. And that will be the end of uh, our cruise, a one week uh, cruise. From um, uh, Ruse, we move to the other side of the river, to Giurgiu, Romania and there we disembark the ship. And from there, your guests are really recommended to take one of the post-extension tours, because that will be the only, the most comfortable way to see those, uh, uh, that part, sorry, that part of the world. So you either go to Transylvania and Bucharest, or you fly from Bucharest to Istanbul. And as Angie was born in Transylvania, he can, she can tell us a few words about it. No, I am the nice Transylvanian and I left my fangs under the, under the pillow. So here we go <laughs> a little bit through uh, the beautiful extension. Um, you can, uh, the first stop will be the Palace Castle, one of the most beautiful castles in Europe, I can say. And that belonged to our royal family that came from Germany, the Hohenzollern family. Beautiful uh, art inside, inside this castle. It's really a jewel. It was the first uh, illuminated castle in Europe in 1883. And uh, you will see a lot of beautiful chandeliers, Cordoba leather, um, covered walls, and more um, artifacts. And then I will be very happy if you will visit the city of Brasov, the city where I was born. Um, it has all these beautiful streets coming to the center and the black church as a landmark in the background. This is a Lutheran church uh, built in the 14th century. It went on fire in 1689 and that's why the, the walls are a little bit darkened. 
and uh, has a beautiful collection of Anatolian Turkish carpets inside the church, as well as one of the largest um, organs in a, in a church in Eastern Europe, uh, 4,000 pipes. And after we visit Brasov, we go to Sigishwara. Um, it is the city center. It's really under the UNESCO World Heritage Zone. It's amazing. It looks like a painter came and chose beautiful colors to paint these uh, facades. And next to the tower, we have the house where Vlad the Impaler was born. Um, then we will also visit the landmark of Romania, which is the Bran Castle, uh, where probably, who knows, uh, Vlad the Impaler passed by or maybe even lived in this beautiful castle in a beautiful uh, setup really around beautiful uh, mountain villages. You will have a wonderful time there. And talking about culinar culinary traditions, we do have some amazing desserts. Please go and try them in Brasov. And on the left side, we have the Romanian cottage cheese donuts called Papanash. And you can miss this when you go to Romania. After this, we will continue to Bucharest, known for its large boulevards and amazing Belle Epoch buildings, um, an amazing city between the two world wars uh, through its architecture. And this is part of the architecture before communism. And now I will show you another picture of what the communists brought. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the second largest uh, administrative building in the world. It is the Parliament Palace and Ceausescu's Palace. Um, it's really a palace inside and it can be seen from the moon. So that's what we were building in communist times. And an, another option for you will be to continue with three nights in Istanbul instead of the Transylvanian extension. And Istanbul is one of our most favorite cities here. <laughs> yes, it really is. And I think uh, Istanbul doesn't need much introduction. Everybody knows it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world with an excellent cuisine, one of the best cuisines we have in uh, Europe, with very friendly people, with lots of history. And our hotel, the Four Seasons Hotel, is located in the very heart of the old town in Sultanahmet. And uh, from the terrace of our hotel, you can see probably the most famous, uh, the um, uh, best uh, and the most visited site of Istanbul, and that is uh, Hagia Sophia or Aya Sophia. So it's like a minute uh, walking distance from our hotel. In Istanbul, we have a walking tour. We take you to see different um, mosques and, of course, the royal palace, the Topkapi Palace, which is situated between two bodies of water. In the back, you see Bosphorus, and far in the distance, you see Asia. So Istanbul is built on two continents and two bodies of water, Bosphorus in the back and Golden Horn in front. Hagia Sophia, more than 1500 years old. It used to be Orthodox at the beginning, and then it was a mosque for 400 years, and then it was a museum, and starting maybe two months ago is a mosque again. In uh, Istanbul, we also take you to visit the oldest uh, covered um, uh, bazaar in the world with more than 60 streets and 4,000 shops. And in the Grand Bazaar, you can buy whatever you want to buy in uh, this world from furniture to ceramic to glass to leather to uh, Turkish carpets, uh, food, Turkish delights or whatever. So you have to visit the Grand Bazaar. And the most beautiful mosque in the city is definitely the Blue Mosque because of the color of the um, uh, tiles uh, that uh, they are to be found inside. So you, it's hard to choose maybe between Istanbul and Transylvania. I'm sure you want to do them both. Of course you can um, do Transylvania with AMA waterways and then go to Istanbul on your own or the other way around. But whatever you decide to choose, you are in a big trip. Both uh, post extensions are wonderful. 
We really, really look forward to, to having you on board. And uh, Denise, thank you so much for, for having us today. We hope that we brought Eastern Europe a little closer to your hearts and we can't wait to have you on board. Yes, me and Diana really hope that we will cruise with you. <laughs> we are looking wow. forward to it. What, for a sure. great, what a great presentation. So thank you, Angie, Maddie, uh, and Diana. Wow, you really brought it to life and made it very special. Uh, and now uh, I'm sure uh, Denise, uh, Eric, and Sam will, uh, will like to say their, their final words to really, you know, also thank you and, and, and give you instructions on how you can bring this magical trip to life uh, and, and make it happen for you. So thank you all. And again, thank you, Denise, Eric, and Sam as well. Thank you. That was wonderful. And I learned a lot. And I can't wait to, to go back to that area because I, I loved it the first time and can't wait to explore the wines in particular. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of you, but especially to Sam and Eric, because we wouldn't be having this cruise or, or this um, you know, experience without them. Uh, so I'm going to also say to you that you have my email and phone number here. Um, and I'm go also going to remind everyone that we're, we're more than half full on this ship. So please give me a call or email me. Uh, so you can talk to me about procuring a cabin. And I just want to end this with um, Eric and Sam um, set, having a little moment to say goodbye. And I hope to talk to all of you soon about getting on board the cruise if you're not already booked. So I'm going to hand this over to Eric first then. I, I just want to go get some lunch and drink something after watching that. I'm so hungry right now. Um, you know, uh, I would, I'm actually, you know, I just took a little while. I'm really glad to have sat in on this. I just really learned a lot. Um, I was really excited to hear the things you had to say, uh, Diana. You know, one of the one of the reasons among many that I uh, commit to these cruises is that there are always these opportunities for me to learn new things about new wine regions. And uh, in fact, we had an option to repeat one of the cruises we had done in the past. And uh, I, I pushed really hard for us to not do that because I've never been to this part of the, the world. I've read about the wines, I've tasted some of them. And, uh, you know, the opportunity to learn from people like you and uh, see the landscape, taste these things. You know, I always feel like wines taste better where they come from too, when you get to know the people. It's so exciting. Um, another really neat thing that I'm I wanting to explore when I'm out there is, I think one of the, the challenges of, you know, and, and Arizona sees this too, um, with being a kind of unknown or not popular wine region is, is getting this, like for us, it's a self, it's identity. You know, we have California right next door. Do we, do we want to get recognized because we make wines that taste like or smell like California wines? Of course not. But we're young enough that we're still struggling to really find what grapes grow best in what places and develop a regional style and an identity that is our own. Um, interestingly, I've also watched, I, I've been a kind of a student of international wine history. I've watched a lot of countries chase international styles, chase Robert Parker, chase the wine enthusiasts, and lose a sense of themselves, and then come back to it. Um, I've watched Spain become very uh, Americanized, and, and then now I see younger people coming back and re-exploring their traditions. So one of the things that excites me the most about Romania, Hungary, Serbia, Croatia, etc., is wanting to really experience some of those some of those old traditions. And interestingly, I'm also seeing a lot of young winemakers, even in my country, uh, explore what they would call more ancient winemaking techniques. Um, and so this is going to, I'm really, really excited. And in fact, at some point, I would love, if you know about any wines uh, from these regions that are exported and are available here, Denise and I have been talking about doing a little tasting at either her restaurant or my winery. So um, thanks so much. I'm, I'm really excited and I'm excited to meet you all in person too. Thanks. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Were you out there? Yeah, I'm. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. That's great. Okay. Well, listen. I enjoyed listening to all that. I'm so sorry that, unlike Eric, I didn't see the pictures of the food, so I'm not literally uh, starving. <laughs> but, um, but, but, um, it's a funny thing because I really came to wine through food, and I made my wines to go with food. So, 
so food, food is a big love of mine and I, I cook a lot. Um, but just, I'm excited about, about this job. I've been excited about all of them. This one is like plunging into a really new area. And I think that's kind of exciting. One of the reasons, um, I, I love wine ever since I was a kid, but one of the reasons I've sort of developed this passion for doing something that just, that just, comes from one place and again it's just me I love what Eric does I think it's brilliant and fantastic but I just have this own personal drive is because um, years ago I'm making films I would go to Europe once a year or once every two years um, and the states taking these movies that I'd made to to promote them and my favorite thing to do and the thing that led to my real discovery of how, of how I want to make wines is um, what, finishing finishing at dreadful things like the Cannes Film Festival and jumping in a little a little render car and driving off into the country and stopping every night at some little French village that I'd never plotted to go to and finding this little inn and going in there and eating that food, some of which I'd never heard of or tasted before, and drinking those wines. And I, I remember thinking I always really enjoyed those wines. I don't know whether they were great wines or not. They weren't bad, that's for sure. But what I loved about them is that they came – they came from and they spoke of a place and they, they, they spoke of a family or a person who made them and they just had that unique quality of, of, of expressing individuality. And um, I'm really looking forward to discovering those kinds of things in this part of the world and uh, look forward to being with and meeting you all and having a really great time like we always do with Emma Waterway. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. It'll be our pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Eric, Denise. And uh, we can't wait to welcome each and every one of you on board the, uh, the Alma Verde on this wonderful cruise. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next year, if not sooner. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.